Today's episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, and TradeHill.com, 10% off your trade hill, your, your fees for life with referral code THR141, and MountGox.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Bitcoin Show, episode 22. I'm Bruce Wagner. This is Manny Mena. And today we have a very special guest from TradeHill.com, as you probably already know, Jared Kenna, on Skype here live via via Skype, live from Chile. Hey, Jared, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks, Bruce. Good. You look good. You you sound good. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is trade well several things um about trade hill uh first the mate the announcements uh that are that are well all the announcements but one of them is that i'm excited about is instant buy and instant sell because finally back it's back right exactly exactly we had to rework a few things uh we changed the way uh, a lot of things work internally and we just wanted to test it thoroughly and make sure it would be um, compatible so we're completely done testing. It's live and it's uh, working good. Okay. I mean, I, I was getting some emails and saying, you know, what's going on with Trade Hill? Instant buy is down because they thought that that meant they couldn't buy. And I explained to them, no, you just put in a bid the normal way. But I was curious too because I didn't really understand why. Why did you have to take instant buy and sell down? Um, I. Honestly, I can't give you the technical reasons because uh, I don't really deal with that. Okay. Um, I could get an answer from those guys and get back to you. But uh, okay. basically, uh, the way I understand it, uh, when they were reworking things with the API and uh, how it communicates with the other systems, mm. uh, they just had to make some modifications with how it integrated. And you oh. change one thing and it can affect everything. Oh, so, okay. Uh, I, I, thought, think, I thought maybe it had something to do with the Mt. Gox hack and it was a security thing, but it wasn't related to that at all. No, no, no. It oh, was just, okay. I mean, we, it was basically the way I understand it. There was a lot of optimization going on and mm-hmm. a lot of changes in code. And okay. uh, I think it was more precaution with a lot of testing um, because, I mean, with Bitcoin, there's not a lot of uh, forgiveness. I mean, if you make right. a mistake, exactly. uh, you're done. So, yeah, it's a um, cash we, dispenser you know, we machine. You really have to test it and make sure everything's 100% yeah, good. Especially to go for a feature it. like that, you know, that a lot yeah. of people are going to use. Live, instant buy, instant sell, no limits, withdraw everything. Yeah, that's risky. So, okay. <laughs> so, it's just normal uh, routine debugging and processes uh, to make sure that everything is rock solid. I, because it, it just was the timing of it that it went down about the same mm-hmm. time as Mt. Gox. I assumed that it had something to do with uh, the Mt. Gox hack, but. Uh, because that's you, you actually did some other things too, right? Didn't you lock down any accounts that had matching addresses and force them to change their passwords? Right, right. I mean, the first thing we did when we heard about the Mt. Go- Mt. Gox uh, hack was uh, um, freeze all the accounts. And then we, we took the entire site down for roughly 12 hours. Um, and we said we sent out messages and we said change all your passwords, especially if you had the same one. I mean, it's, it's never a good idea to use the same uh, login information on two sites um, because we right. saw a lot of attempts on the uh, anyone that was on the Mt. Gox list essentially um, they tried those emails on the <coughs> site. Uh, we also initiated a, a feature that would um, disable accounts after a certain amount of tries. So uh, mm. we saw a lot of accounts that got locked out because they were on both lists and they uh, tried to get in. But right. um, in the end uh, we only had one account hacked out of the entire thing and I spoke with the gentleman and essentially he used the same exact email and the same exact password on uh, Mt. Gox and on Trade Hill and he also used an extremely simple password um, Mm. which was cracked on Mt. Gox so that let him just walk right into his Trade Hill account Mm. and um, unfortunately it was hacked I think three days before we implemented the uh, two-factor authentication. Wow. So um, had it happened a couple of days later, he probably would have been fine, yeah. despite even having a uh, vulnerable password. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, we just did, I mean, I, I rant about that too all the time, that you have to use mm-hmm. a long, secure, unique password that's not dictionary words, not words that are names of places or things, and not birth dates and all those obvious things. 
addresses and things that people usually use. We, in fact, we just did a how-to tutorial video yesterday uh, teaching people how to do password management. It's really Internet Basics 101 for every website, but it's not just spreadsheets, documents, and emails we're talking about anymore. Now we're talking about money because Bitcoin is money. Yeah. So we did a whole how-to video teaching people how to do password management and come up with a really, really easy way to um, and free way to have uh, a unique password for abs absolutely everything you use. So that's r important and good. So we got instant buy, instant sell is back. We've got um, the euro now. You're dealing with euro as its own currency without having to convert it into dollars. Is that right? Exactly, and there's, there's some pros and cons to that. Um, I mean, the way Mt. Gox does it, uh, they take SEPA transfers and then they'll, they'll change that to the dollar. So it increases the liquidity on their dollar market, uh, which is great. I mean, it's great if you want to buy with dollars. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, there is no euro market with them. So we're taking a little bit of a risk. Uh, we're creating that euro market. Um, and hopefully, it, I mean, definitely it will be cheaper for Europeans to purchase Bitcoins because they won't have to convert it to dollars and back. Um, mm. But it's gonna, we're going to need some people to throw some money in there to, um, to kickstart it. And it's looking good. So far, we've got, um, I don't know, um, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in the first hour or two. So I believe this is not going to be a problem at all. Euro, you mean 20 or 30000 euros, probably? Or yeah, dollars sorry, worth of euros? Dollars, yes. <laughs> euros worth of dollars. So uh, in the future, <laughs> we may offer the option to transfer between mm -hmm. dollars and euros on the exchange. Oh. Um, but uh, initially, we're just going to do it this way. And uh, I think it's really important that Bitcoin has a euro market mm -hmm, uh, because absolutely. we talk about being a decentralized currency with you know, multiple exchanges and everything else. Um, I don't think we should tie ourselves to the dollar. No, to absolutely not. It's a global exactly. currency. We're, not, we're, we're beyond the United States. Even you guys are not even in the United States. You're in Chile. But so like, exactly. um, the, like on the other exchanges, like you were, you were mentioning about Gox, if, if I'm in Europe and I put euros in, if I'm in Germany or something, I put euros in, then it gets converted to U.S. dollars, what, by Mt. Gox or by the bank in the, in the wire transfer process? I'm not 100% sure. I honestly, I've never deposited uh, euros right. into Mt. Gox, so I'm not sure. But I, it's mm. probably in the bank. That would yeah. probably be how they do it. Well, the banks um, are going to be, mean, so they're going to charge you their fees going in and then right. charge your fees coming back out. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And we and we accept uh, wire transfers from anywhere in the world into USD. So I mean, I've I've received wire transfers from all over, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you lose a little bit of money when you do that, which is yeah. unfortunate. I mean, if we can offer every currency, but uh, at this point in time, mm -hmm. it's not possible to have every single currency. I mean, there's countries where Bitcoin's not used at all. There's countries where it's you know a few people are using it. Um, Right. We actually have enough for a little liquidity down here in Chile, and mm -hmm. we actually have a market down here in Chile, yeah. which uh, might be surprising to some people. But uh, we tried to start one up in Peru, and there's just not the demand in Peru there is. So yeah. you're going to see, I mean, there's, there's probably at least 10, 15, 20 currencies that are probably, uh, probably have enough volume already. How many? So I would say it's somewhere between 10 and 20. Between 10 and 20. So, like, is there, I don't know if you have, like, uh, any analysis about that, but, like, because, like you said, if if you're in Peru or or Chile or whatever, and you have to convert everything to U.S. Mm -hmm. dollars to put it into that market, and then you got to convert everything back, there's the cost of doing that versus the cost of uh, lack of liquidity, yeah. um, and you might be overpaying when you buy or or under receiving when you sell. So, like, is there some way that someone can easily figure out which is a better um, approach? Well, I think, I think one thing that we're really going to see that's going to solve it is you're going to have people doing cross-currency arbitrage. And, uh, and you're, you also see it on cross-exchange uh, arbitrage with Trade Hill and Mt. Gox. So, so basically, it, it's going to provide mm -hmm. an option for someone to, to profit. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they'll mm -hmm. keep the prices a little more consistent, um, mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, so you won't, you won't see the big gap. You know, right now, um, you, know, you, can buy, uh, you can buy a Bitcoin for 5,000 Chilean pesos, mm -hmm. which is the equivalent of $10. And wow. then you can sell that Bitcoin in the United States for fourteen dollars. So, times like I mean, like right now, it's possible to make a lot of money by moving uh, by moving currency between the other countries. But as more professional traders see this, um, they're going to be doing it. So as that happens, it'll close the gap. I mean, uh, basically, the gap is what creates the profit. And can, so it's so. so can they do all that through away. APIs? Um. There's actually a site that tracks the exchanges and the different currencies. 
and lets you know any discrepancies. <laughs> and if you're able to do it fast enough, you could usually get in mm -hmm. uh, while that window's still open. Because, you know, mm -hmm. almost every market's volatile, so that's going to be changing constantly throughout the It seems the day. like that should be automated. Like, there must be somebody creating automated tools that will do that arbitrage for them. And, and why, aren't, why aren't there a dozen people doing that already? Okay, there's a lot. It sounds like a huge opportunity to make a lot of money. Which is actually it is, good. It is. I wish I wasn't so busy. I'd be taking advantage of it myself. I can, I can <laughs> see the opportunity, but uh, honestly, I don't really do any trading. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. Up with, uh, don't you think it's good for, the, for the, all the markets in general if, if this, if this uh, for these automated, uh, arbitra whatever they call them, arbitration uh, bots? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that good for all the markets to keep them all very uh, equal? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it is. It is. Um, Exactly, mm -hmm. you know, and you're gonna, you're gonna, at times you're gonna see them, you know, um, there's gonna be gaps, there's gonna be a difference, mm -hmm. but wow. uh, in general, yeah, they do keep them pretty close, and it okay. is good for it. So there's a business opportunity for you guys, uh, if you're, if you coders out there that are looking for some business opportunity to make money in Bitcoin, create a, create a trading bot on Trade Hill so that you can keep all the currencies uh, even, and uh, that actually is good for the Bitcoin economy and good for all the markets, stability so that people don't have to convert it to another currency. They can just deal with the market in their own currency and um, it helps everybody and you make some money in the process. So it sounds like a win, win, win. Exactly, exactly. So how do you buy to land pesos? So we're going to look at other options regarding that too. Uh, we might be able to do something like uh, lower the fees for the, for the new markets, something like that, which mm -hmm. would uh, provide more incentive to kickstart them, you know, which is also going to be good because it's going to help spread Bitcoin. Um, another benefit. A lot, of, a lot of people don't have the options to buy Bitcoins yeah. in these countries. And, and it's easy to transfer, you know, a thousand euros or a thousand dollars to the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to pay forty or fifty dollars or whatever, and then pay mm -hmm. for the exchange, but if you want to buy, you know, twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin, and you live somewhere in South America, you're not going to be able to do that. Right. Okay. So, all right. So we've got the euro in the eurozone native currency, and you're adding the the Great Britain Great Britain pound, the UK British sterling as well, right? Real soon now. Right. Right. It's it's in the pipeline. Um, I don't want to say when it's going to be available because I don't want to be wrong on that, mm -hmm. but. Um, RSN, as we say, real soon Possibly, now. Exactly, exactly. You know, it could come out tomorrow or it might be a little bit away. But okay. uh, we're just about closed on that one. Cool. That's awesome, too, for those Brits out there that exactly. have rejected the euro. <laughs> <laughs> and they certainly don't want the U.S. dollar. That's cool. So then you'll be able, they'll, they'll be able to do, ultimately, once that's set up, they'll be able to do the same thing. They can put it into the, to the uh, British pound market and directly without converting as well. Exactly, exactly. Cool. The Brits will like that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. But what we, the big news we want to talk about today is um, your new two-factor authentication. And um, right. this is all the rage. Ever since the Mt. Gox hack, you know, obviously, we're, we're all thinking the same thing. We're all reading the same stuff and that we're all exposed to the same vulnerabilities. Everybody's talking two-factor authentication. And everybody Absolutely. has a different approach. But you guys have an approach that um, you have like five different methods, is it? Right, four? right, five different methods. Oh, four or five? Yeah. So, one, I mean, one of them is a physical, like, uh, USB device, mm -hmm. but then there are lots of others that are absolutely free, that are just uh, with all you need is any telephone or a telephone with text messaging or a smartphone with a free app. Am I right? Exactly. exactly. Okay. So what we want to do is that we're going to actually demonstrate this um, and I've, so I've got my laptop on my lap here. I'm not always looking at the chat room, but uh, here I am. Can you see my chat room? I mean my chat room. Can you see my <laughs> laptop? I'm logged into my Trade Hill account, as you can see. I'm not going to show you how much money I have because I don't have any money. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, let's see. What I'm going to do... Okay, so what I do is I go up here to the top right and I'm going to click on my email address. By the way, is there another way to get to that settings? Or is it, to, is get to the, to get to the profile? Yeah, the profile. No, I just click on the email address. Okay, oh. so it doesn't say profile, but you just click on your own email address where it says welcome and your email address in green, that takes you to your profile. So that's how I get there. And as you can see, there's my email address and my referral program info. And you keep scrolling down, where that's where you would change your password. Mm -hmm. Keep on going down, you got API access if you're gonna use uh, your own software and so on. But here's the next two things are really cool. Um, Two-factor authentication, and uh, I have done this before, so I know what I'm doing now. But it's really easy. Watch how, watch this. 
So I just click that check mark and that's it, I'm done. No, almost done. <laughs> All right, so then the next thing is capture enabled, which is almost as exciting. I can uncheck <laughs> that. <laughs> And um, I think, didn't we talk about this? I don't know, somebody suggested, I don't, I don't know if I suggested it. Somebody suggested this and, it, and they did it right away while we were talking about yeah. it. So he, Jared said, let me call the guy and then he fixed it. So now you can turn off that irritating image, uh, I call them squiggly letters when you uh, log in. And if you're gonna turn on two-factor authentication, you certainly don't need the CAPTCHA. Absolutely. And that's that, just obsolete. I really hate those things. Yeah, hate those things. Okay, so we turned on two-factor authentication. We turned off CAPTCHA enabled. I hit update services, and now I'm done. Your service has been updated. Well, almost done. All right, so now my services have been updated, but in order for it to really take effect, I have to go up here to the top right corner, you know, click log out, and then click log in again. Tell me if I make any mistakes. Okay, the CAPTCHA is still there, but Jared tells me I can ignore it because I turned that off. Is it true? Let's try it. I'm gonna hit log in without typing anything in. He's right. Wow. Oh my gosh, okay. So even though it asks me for a CAPTCHA, I don't have to type it in, that's brilliant. Okay, now here's where I'm gonna have to find out what is my phone number, I don't even know. You know, with Google Voice, the cool thing about it is you don't even need your own number. Um, let me find it. Uh, okay, here it is. Everybody has my number in the whole world anyway, so I don't care. Um, I wonder if I have to put parentheses. No, I'm putting... Now, is this, this is only for the U.S. To, to use this method, is that right? U.S. No, customers? No, I'm actually using it down here in Chile. Oh, so you can put in any... Oh, 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 what am I saying? Of course, the first option is the country. All right, let's drop down, oh my gosh, you can pick from any country. I just noticed the plus one, but that's because I'm already on the United States, it knows. So it's got the plus one already because I selected United States. I put in my phone number, now it wants phone type. I'm gonna tell it it's not a landline, it's a mobile phone. And then it says call me or text me. So I'm gonna hit text me. I don't really wanna talk right now. Now it's uh, apparently, okay, look, here's my phone. Let me see if I can bring it over here. If you can switch to that camera. Well, anyway, you can trust me. I got a text message instantly. There it is. Well, anyway, you know what a text message looks like. There's a text message. And what it says is duo verification code 3564. Don't tell anybody. This is secret. 3564, and then I touch verify. Can you see that on my screen? Okay. Um, all right, and then you don't see it on my screen? Okay, I, I entered the number and I clicked verify and then I click continue. Okay, switch over, there we go, now you can see my screen. Okay, so I clicked continue and now the next screen comes up and it says install Duo Mobile. Now Duo Mobile is the actual app that is uh, designed to do this um, two-factor authentication, right? And it's only, it's limited, it, it only works on Apple, Android, Palm, Blackberry, Windows Mobile. J2ME. And what? J2ME. J2ME. Yeah, that's all? All right. <laughs> so <laughs> it says if you're using another type of phone, skip this step. Visit the installation link. Okay, so I'm going to say text me the installation link. And now it's going to send me a text message. Another text message. Let's see if I can, well... Once again, you know what a text message looks like, but there it is. Okay, so uh, let's see. Text me the... Do, 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 do. Didn't get it yet. It's supposed to be... You can also install it by visiting this link. Install the application. Oh, it's waiting. It's the browser. Waiting for API. There it is. There's my text. I don't know if you can see that, but... There's the text message. Okay, now switch back to my screen. And I'm gonna touch the link. Uh, let's see, okay, I touched the link on my phone and it will actually take me in the phone's browser to the uh, market. It says complete this action using the market. And it's basically gonna allow you to install the application. Exactly, it takes me directly to the correct application in the market. And you can see right here um, that this is what it's taking me to in the typical Android market, you know, the typical Android market screen. And it's an app called Duo Mobile. 
All right, so I'm just going to touch that button. It says install free. I say OK to accept permissions. Your item will be downloaded. And uh, here it comes. It's downloading. All right, so let's see. You want to see what it looks like when it's downloading? Are you yeah, there, Jared? Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay, cool. All right, see that? It? Can you show that? That's the app. Here we go. Is it finished? I can't see. Uh, oh, yeah, it's already finished. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, all right, so installed successfully. Tap the screen. Okay, see, there's my, show my phone there. We're jumping back and forth. Camera crazy here. That's the app. So, literally, all I did was touch the link, and the link took me to the just typical Android market thing, and I said, touched free, I touched install, and then it said downloading, then it said installed, and that's it. It just is dual mobile. Okay, so that's the app, and it's got two tabs. It's got passcodes and dual push. But anyway, I'm going to keep go back to my screen and follow these instructions. That was step one, was that link. And then step two is install the application. I already did that, so I click continue. Now it says activate the application. So there's a step here where you have to activate the application, which is going to tell this application that it's owned by me. All right, so I clicked uh, the, the uh, text me the activation link and once again I got the activation key as a text message you know you know what a text message looks like I don't know it's a little blurry but anyway you get the idea all right so I'm gonna touch that link once again it's gonna open that link now this time it says complete the action of opening that link that URL with my browser or with duo mobile so I'm going to take a chance and assume that it wants me to activate it with, uh, by opening that link in Duo Mobile. And now you can see it just says on my screen, activating Duo Mobile. It's a little glare there. See, it's just the normal Android message. It says activating Duo Mobile. And all this stuff is a one-time only process, right, Jared? Right, that's okay. correct. This is just authenticating the phone, basically that's making it. sure that they're, they're connected to each other and integrated. OK, so that's what the app looks like. And again. Um, it's got uh, two tabs. Now on the main tab, it's called passcodes, and it's got a generate passcode button. There's another uh, tab called duo push, and it just says waiting. Um, I think it says here, no request to approve. All right, so back to my screen. Um, this is so much fun. All right, it's just one time though, and what's really cool is it's all free, and I didn't have to buy anything or mail anything or whatever. Number two, verify action. So I won't be waiting weeks for a device. It says here, after, after activating your application, which I already did, generate a passcode and type it below. Oh, okay. So I see there's a button here, uh, once again, on the main passcodes page uh, of my app, and it says generate passcode. So I simply just tap that button, and it gives me that number, a six-digit number. And so I'm going to type that in the box, and that's what it's asking for. 364098. Don't tell anybody. All right, so I click verify, and then I've got continue to log in. That's it. And I'm done. So now I'm on the, on the login screen. So this is what I'm going to see every time I log in. And I get the choice to uh, do a duo push, phone call, or passcode. Now, the way I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> Jared, but duo push is where it will actually send a message. They call it push because the software is going to push a message right, right to my phone. Um, phone call is exactly what it sounds like the computer is actually going to call my phone number and that would work even with a landline because it calls by the way I did this the other, yesterday and I tried the phone call thing and what it did it told me what number to press on the screen and then when the phone rang it said press the number on your screen so you only have to press one digit but um, but that's it all I had to do was press one digit and so you can do that with any even an old landline yeah. If you're in, you know, up in the hills in Honduras, you can still do that. And then passcode is the one where I just showed you, where you just ge hit generate passcode, and it's a six-digit number, and it goes there. So the cool thing about this is uh, dual push, I'm going to show you in a second, is just the coolest, and it defaults to that. A phone call will work if you don't have anything but a phone, if it's just an old landline or whatever. Passcode will work if your phone, for some reason your phone didn't have internet access, the app could still generate a passcode, um, as long as you had internet access to get to the site, your phone wouldn't need to have internet access. But um, let me, I'm going to demonstrate the duo push because that's just the coolest thing and that's the right. default. So when I log in, from now on, every time I log into my account, it's, it's defaulted to duo push. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the phone. 
Okay, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it. I'm gonna try and hold it really closely like that. Can you see that clearly? Okay, now I'm just, I'm literally, at the, at the moment I say it, I'm gonna tap login. I'm gonna tap, show the phone. Show the phone, Ed. Okay, bring the phone live. Ready? There, okay, now I'm gonna touch login. Boom, I vib it vibrated, I don't know if you saw that. Let me show you the message. It shows right here on the um, notification bar, you see that message which says, um, Duo Push Mobile, Duo Notification Recorded. So literally I just touch it and this is what comes up. That's my favorite part, that it gives that. you an option to deny it or allow it. Yeah. And it tells you who it is, their IP. Login request, pretty exactly. Awesome. Yeah, it tells you the city, the state, their IP address, so you know if your ex is trying to get into your account. You know exactly <laughs> who it is. All right, now when I actually press uh, approve, show my screen on the laptop there. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you when. Okay, this is what you see on the screen, right? Now when I touch approve, watch this. I'm going to touch approve in three, two, one. I just touched approve. And as you can see, instantly it says, Success, you're logged in. And I didn't press anything. I didn't touch any keys. As soon That's as the I, coolest part right there. Yeah, it's just so cool. I touch the green approve, and boom, I'm in. I didn't have to press any more buttons. It's just so cool. And we, we tried this the other day, and we tried, uh, I'm going to log out and do it again to show you. So we did it this the other day, and we said deny, and then when you hit deny, it asks you why. Is, do you suspect a fraudulent attempt mm -hmm. or whatever, fraud? Or is it a mistake or cancel? It gives right. you the choice. And when it's fraud, Jared and Trade Hill know about it immediately. Exactly, exactly. We did it, right? So when we hit, when we hit I suspect fraud, boom, Jared gets a notification on his screen and an email saying a fraud attempt. And what are you going to do about it, Jared? Are you going to hunt down my ex? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You cut out the... Oh, I was saying, like, if... if <laughs> If, if it notifies me somebody's trying to hack into my account and it's like, whoa, what is this? I didn't try to log into Trade Hill and I recognize the IP address as my ex. So, and I hit fraud and then you get the notification. What do you do about it? Are you going to hunt down my ex and punish them? <laughs> There's going to be an extra fee for that one, Bruce. An extra fee? <laughs> Only if they're in Chile. No, but... <laughs> exactly. But one thing's for sure, they won't get into the account. So that's a good thing. So let's show, show my screen. I want to show it. I want to do it again. This is so cool. <laughs> I don't know why I think this is so cool. Because it's free and it's instantaneous. Well, nearly instantaneous. Okay, so you see there's my login ID, my password. I'm going to skip the CAPTCHA because I turned that off. Thank you, God. And there it is. <laughs> login using. I'm going to hit Duo Push. And literally, I touch login. And then you can see. Wait, there. Touch login. And then you can see the phone immediately gets this notification on the drop down I have to touch the notification on the drop down then it says loading and there it is boom login request that is so cool now watch when I hit deny I'm gonna hit deny I don't know if you can see this can you see that it says suspected fraud or it was a mistake or cancel so of course I I think it was it seems fraudulent I'm gonna touch it seems fraudulent reporting and it was just reported now show my screen it says right there already. By the time I touched it, I didn't touch anything else on the computer. It says login request reported as fraudulent. In other words, you're going to jail, buddy. And and did you get a message, Jared? <laughs> let's let's see here. Let me. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're a little. You're, it's actually. You're not in your inbox for right? yeah. <laughs> the email. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know there was going to be a fraud the, attempt. Yeah, I did. Let's see. Is your IP address seven one dot? One two five dot something else that I'm yeah, not gonna that say on the, about uh, right. on the air. Must be. That's it. You know what's yeah. crazy yep. is that banks don't even have this yet. Banks that's don't have it. I'm, I'm probably gonna get. I'm probably gonna me. get a message from the coders again, like in about thirty seconds, saying, uh, asking me if we're screwing around, if this is a legit fraud attempt. This is the same thing that happened. Uh, oh, last time we did went you this. did you get <laughs> did I get you into trouble the other day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they're gonna go. Uh oh. What is this? Somebody's pulling the fire alarm again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to see the only one TV and know it's you, Bruce. They'll go, oh boy, it's him. Yeah, I'm not going to have any protection. They go, oh, that's, he's cries wolf every day. There's another fraud attempt. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Wow, that is just so cool. Now, and, and okay, now I want to do the other one. All right, so show my screen, Ed. This is, okay, I log in. I put in my login ID and password. I'm probably more excited about this than you are, Jared. 
Okay, so I log in with my login ID and password. You see that? And I selected the second one, phone call. This is just so cool. Watch this. Okay, I hit phone call and watch what happens. Let's see. You see that? Look it's vibrating. That. I have it on silent, but I'm going to answer. I'm going to just touch answer. Wait a minute. Or a speaker, maybe. If you are not expecting this call, please press 8 to report log. Otherwise, press 6 on your phone to log Indiana. Did you hear that? So it said, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you did not initiate this call, press eight to report it as fraud. Otherwise, press six. Thank you. Goodbye. And she's so polite about it. I can't get over that. Well, they're in Indiana. You know, they're polite in Indiana. But now look, I'm on. I'm, I didn't have to touch anything. That's it. She just called me. The, the greatest part about That's that even is easier. you're not limiting access to anybody who would have access to bitcoins in the first place because right. almost everybody has a landline or a way to receive a text message or something like that. You know, that's pretty cool. That's a really important point. You know, there are a lot of, I have a lot of followers on Twitter who actually are in the visually impaired community and they are going to love that voice oh, system. Oh, absolutely. Because they don't have to mess with, a, you know, a phone and an app and, and even, even a keyboard. I mean, all they have to be able to do is work a, a you know, what is it, a 10 digit phone. So literally they can answer the phone voice mm -hmm. and press six or eight. Hopefully they press the right key. But you know, yeah, they have some systems. Yeah, sure. of course they they know how to do that. So, but that just makes it so easy. You literally can be out in the boondocks with just rotary landline service, and as long as you can get on the internet <laughs> itself, um, you don't need any kind of a fancy phone. As long as your phone yeah. is tied to that, I wonder if it'll work with Google Voice. We're gonna have to try that later because if it can, it should work with Google Voice. You know, it should, right? Because yeah. what would be so sweet is if. Yeah, if it works with a landline, then of course it should work with yeah, Google Voice. Yeah, because Google Voice is just a forwarding number. And you know what's cool about that, Jared? You might not have thought of this, but with Google Voice, I can put my Google Voice number in and I can program it to ring on eight different phones. Yep. My, my cottage up in northern Michigan and my summer house in, you know, as if I had these things and my mobile phone on my yacht and uh, <laughs> all my different cell phones and everybody else. So I can actually take the call and verify it. Although that's kind of uh, insecure, I suppose, if I <laughs> well, anybody can answer the phone and verify it. But you can actually control it. In Google Voice, the point yeah. is you can control where your phone rings. So if I'm on vacation in the mountains or something and that's all I have is internet mm -hmm. and that, um, my, or my cell service, you know, I have some AT&T or something and it doesn't work outside of the city, you know, I could actually have it ring to whatever phone works. AT&T has signal problems? No, no, no. Did I say that? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I didn't mean AT and T. I meant <laughs> something else. Anyway, uh, but yeah. So that's that's cool. That is really cool. It, so it works with voice, and it works the same way with a passcode, even. So like, even if my phone didn't have service at all, if I didn't have any phone, um, see, check this out. Let's show them. Show them this one. When I on my laptop screen there. Okay, I'm just logging in. Once again, ignore that silly captcha because I turned it off. And then I go right here to the, um, to the uh, secondary authentication. Now this time I'm going to do passcode. And of course there's also a button that says send SMS passcode. So it'll actually send me a passcode via SMS. But um, I don't even have to do that. I don't even have to have SMS. Let's say I'm somewhere out in the boondocks. Um, and all I, ha I do have my smartphone, but I don't have, don't have any service at all. I can literally just go into the uh, Duo Mobile app. As long as my phone has power, I can go into the Duo Mobile app, and once I'm in the app, okay, I'm literally on the first tab, and all I have to do is touch this button that says generate passcode. You see? And did I do it? There. Okay. 377. 747, is that what it says? Okay, yeah. so I, I'm back to my screen and you see 377, 747. It sound, it's a lot easier than it looks when you're trying to man manage. See, success, logged in. That's it. So the app itself just generates this special number. And it's a one-use number. It's basically a password that I can only use for the next few mm -hmm. seconds. And if I don't use it right away, it says, sorry, that's, that's expired. You've got to get a new one. So I have to, I have to touch the button again. Yeah. I hate that. That would be the most <laughs> similar thing that a bank has actually implemented so thus far would be, you know, like that one time password thing. Yeah. Which well, I think would be like the, the dongle, right? Or the, 
where yeah, the, like the yeah the hardware the USB key thing, mm -hmm. um, but that just does it with hardware, and this does it with an app, and it's uh, yeah, that's much a, simpler. That's yeah. more has the opportunity to be more ubiquitous, right? Yeah, because I mean, it's you know these smartphones are a dime a dozen. Now. Almost yeah. everybody has one, but even if you don't, see, this is the thing. Even if you have you know a 1990 old phone. And if you can get a text message, the thing will send you a passcode through the SMS. Oh, we need to ask Jared. Jared, is this only for Touchstone, or does this work for rotary phones as well? <laughs> um, honestly, I'm not 100% it works. sure. Let me uh, it tell works you what, for rotary uh, phones. My grandfather has one that he's, oh. he still uses, so um, I'll oh, really? go to him and test it out and see if a rotary phone That'd works. But uh, just to correct out. you on something, Bruce, oh, uh, no, those wait, actually, actually expire after 30 minutes on the uh, SMSs, and uh, we can actually increase that. So, you know, depending, we can either make it not expire, or we can uh, crank it up even more. Oh, you mean the passcode uh, on the SMS? 30 minutes? Right, right. Oh, wow, right. okay. That's, that's what we have it set at right now. So, I was just uh, joking about it expiring and, and being annoying. It's never expired on me, but well, I know. No, the, ones, the ones from my bank expire right away, and yeah. it's extremely annoying. Honestly, I wish my bank used this system. I think this system is, I mean, I've had about, what, seven or eight bank accounts. That's that what I was going to say. Factor authentication, and Why none of them are they? nearly as smooth as this. Yeah. Um, this is so easy. Just click, click. I mean, you have to have two devices, but that's secure. You know, I, I don't want anybody who sits down at my browser. I actually like that I can have the browser remember my login ID and password because that's really convenient. But I don't want anybody who sits down at my laptop now has my banking. You know, that's not cool. Yeah. So, you know, I love the fact that they have to have my laptop or my computer and my phone because what are the chances? I mean, they're going to have both. Exactly, exactly. And we do offer that physical token as well. So if somebody wanted to purchase that, we can ship it to them. Um, I don't know the exact cost off the top of my head, but I believe it's around... $20. Um, mm -hmm. So we haven't really received any demand for that yet, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because these options work pretty well. But if someone does want that physical token for whatever reason, um, we can provide that as well. Yeah. So basically, we got everything covered. And, and in the end, it's also optional. So if you don't even want to use it, then don't, you know? That's a great question. I was going to ask that. I wonder why banks are not using this yet. I mean, now Bitcoin seems to be real. I mean, well, Bitcoin has always been cutting edge. <laughs> uh, since the history of Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> a couple of years. But um, it's interesting that um, the security of, of exchange sites like Trade Hill uh, seem to have already surpassed the online banking world, that there, there are no, um, they, they don't have this. I, I, I haven't seen any of the banks that have, I mean, at least my banks don't seem to have two-factor authentication. You know what I think a big factor of it is? Everybody who's involved with Bitcoin has such a vested interest in it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go out of their way to make sure that there's no hiccups or any thing that could, you know, sort of set back any progress that's made in the future. Yeah. Because uh, if something goes wrong and that shakes faith in it, or the press has a field day, it could be mm -hmm. detrimental to Bitcoin. I mean, on the other hand, the, the regular normal mainstream banking industry has a lot of competition and you would think they'd be motivated to do this. But on the other hand, I think the, the biggest difference is that there, Banking transactions can al almost always be reversed. Bitcoin transactions can't. So because of the nature of it, mm -hmm. a bank can always reverse everything and they can just, you know, they can sue people, they can do all kinds of things and seize their assets mm -hmm. and seize the, lock down their other bank accounts and all that stuff and get their money back if there was a mistake. And they're not so worried about it. They seem, you know, I remember in the early days when ATM, <laughs> I mean, I'm only 29, but you know, I, I, my grandmother told me about when ATMs first came out, mm -hmm. they, um, they, you know, they were just using plain old like 300 baud modems and they had no security at all. Oh yeah. The, the ATM would just log in by dialing up and they didn't even have a login and password, the machines did. So like they seem to be almost reckless with their lack of security until they're forced to. And, the, and usually it's only a cost benefit thing, like only if they're losing more than it would cost to secure it. Absolutely. It's just that's how they run. But we're, you know, I mean, hopefully we're, uh, the, the Bitcoin community has more foresight and we're trying to really prevent this stuff, even if it does cost mm -hmm. a little bit to invest up front. Even like um, sort of akin to like the founding fathers where they knew these problems existed and would exist in the future and they mm -hmm. vested a great deal of time to address those problems that they probably wouldn't even see in their lifetime. That's it. So, you know, like we, we're so vested in it, we have to make sure that it succeeds. And to make sure it succeeds, we have to cover every little crevice and nook and cranny. You hear that, Jared? We are the founding fathers <laughs> of the people's money. The people's money exactly. of the United Bank exactly. of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> or as they call it on CNN, the company of Bitcoin.
the Bitcoin company. Yeah. It's a, it's a, did you have you seen the growth rate of this company? It's got uh, more, more than one hundred million dollars in its coffers. Anyway, <laughs> we had a laugh about that. Well, this seems like a really good time to take a break, even though we're not letting you get a word in edge, edgewise, Jared. But um, we do want to thank our sponsors that bring us to you every weekday at two p.m. Eastern time on the Bitcoin Show, and they are usgoldcoins.com, which if you're in the U.S., they can be reached at 1-800-HOT-COIN, 1-800-HOT-COIN. Ask for Andy Gauss. He's the guy. He's the man. He's, the, he's my monetary genius about all things money. Um, and if you want to invest and diversify your investments and into other things beyond Bitcoin, there really are other things beyond Bitcoin, um, a great idea is rare U.S gold and silver coins they're called numismatic means just means rare u.s gold and silver coins because they hold their value two ways one because of the metal that's in them obviously gold and silver and the other is because they're rare they're collector's items so it's a really brilliant idea to diversify your investments and he is a genius when it comes to this stuff he's absolutely honorable i completely endorse him i mean we were fans of his national radio show for years before um we met him and became customers of him and we're buying this stuff from him this is before bitcoin <laughs> pbtc pre-bitcoin and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we bought from him and we trust him and if you're ever in a pinch and you need some money he'll buy it back from you he gives priority to his customers of course he's a very loyal honest trustworthy guy not like these other you know things that i would never allow to be a sponsor um, but u.s gold coins if you're outside of the u.s just go to usgoldcoins.com within the u.s Call 1-800-HOT-COIN and ask for Andy. And the one and only famous world's first brick and mortar restaurant that accepts Bitcoin, Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com. Whether you're in New York or you're passing through New York, who isn't passing through New York at some point, right? <laughs> you, you're gonna see all the tourist things and you're gonna find this circle, it's very famous, at the corner of Central Park called Columbus Circle. And you're gonna go, oh my gosh, this is Columbus Circle. That's where Mezzy Grill is. You just go like three blocks south and you're gonna find the world's first restaurant that accepts Bitcoin. They, they call it, they say where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. Well, it, the truth is it's really, really delicious and it's organic ingredients um, as much as possible, mm -hmm. locally grown, sustainable, or into all that stuff. And not only that, it's delicious. And th this is how we found them is because it's Ed and I's, one of Ed and I's favorite places. We were eating there two, three times a week for lunch and for dinner. And now they serve breakfast. We haven't even tried their breakfast yet, but we love their lunch <laughs> and dinner. And uh, that's how we became friends with Marwan and Marwan became a sponsor and Marwan became the first restaurant in the world to accept Bitcoin. And Marwan has camera crews in there every other day. Yeah, <laughs> so that should be an incentive for other people to accept Bitcoin. There you go. You'll get you know, camera crews business. in your restaurant every other day. <laughs> He's happy about that. He doesn't mind. He's a ham. I'm he sure he doesn't. <laughs> he, he does really well on camera. So we thank Marwan. When you, you know, even if you're not in New York, send him an email and thank him for sponsoring the Bitcoin show and only one TV. And of course, TradeHill.com. You know, TradeHill.com has made it so easy to get Bitcoins in and out. The other day, Ed was helping somebody came in who really didn't know that much. They were, you know, barely can work a mouse crowd. And she wanted to sell some Bitcoins. So he, Ed sat down with her and said, okay, just open a Trade Hill account. Make sure you use the referral code to get 10% off your trades for life. Um, the Bitcoin show referral code, of course, on your screen there, it's TH-R141. TH, like Trade Hill, dash R for referral, 141. And then, anyway, he, he had her upload her Bitcoins. And then moments, she sold them, of course. And then immediately she initiated a wire transfer and before the bank closed, she had the money in her hands. I mean, it's that fast, the same day. I mean, it's not always the same day. Of course, it depends on your, your bank and their bank and the cutoff of the wires and all that. But in this case, it was the same day. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm impressed. That's really, really efficient. Um, they have many currencies now um, and expanding all the time as you hear us talking about. Um, and you can leave your, you know, as, as much as possible as these markets are growing, you're going to be able to leave the currency in its own without having to exchange everything into U.S. dollars. As we already said, euro is already here as its own currency and Great, uh, Great Britain, you know, UK, British sterling pound, whatever the heck they call that thing is coming very, very soon. So uh, we thank Trade Hill. Call up Jared. He'll answer his phone. You know, <laughs> he answers his phone 24 hours a day, he doesn't sleep. And thank him, no. as we thank you, Jared, for sponsoring the show, because uh, once again, if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. And 
Mount Gox. Mount Gox is the you know the the, the oldest uh, game in town. Mount Gox is the original online exchange site. MTGOX.com. Who doesn't already know about Mount Gox? I mean, they've got enormous market share, and they're the ones who were hacked, but they didn't run away with your bitcoins. They're here. They're resilient. They're back, and they're still on the scene. And I think it's pretty much unanimous. Everyone, including Mt. Gox, including you guys, Jared Trade Hill, and everybody else, and all these other trade, you know, exchange sites that are springing up. Everybody would agree: the more exchange sites, the better. Nobody Absolutely. wants to be the only exchange site, as I, as Jared said before. Nobody wants to be the only exchange site because the more, the better. It, it, it helps. It benefits the whole entire Bitcoin world. If there's only one exchange, then how are we decentralized? Exactly. Bitcoin is decentralized, and for the benefit of everybody in the entire Bitcoin world, we want. Uh, more options, not less, and healthy competition, just like in the free open source world, is absolutely healthy and good for all of us. So we thank Mt. Gox too. Send them an email and thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show and bringing us to you. So what else is on the horizon, Jared? What, else, what other huge, uh, enormous? Oh, we've got we've got plenty of things. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've been asked not to tell, not to let them out yet. Oh my uh, gosh! He's I was going to say, I want to talk a little bit about uh, DuoSec, Duo Security, the company yeah. that's uh, providing the security for us. I mean, it's 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 one thing to have a really smooth, cool-looking interface that works well, but uh, what good is it if it's not secure? So, um, so basically, a little bit about them. Um, the CEO and founder, his name's Doug Song, and uh, he worked for uh, Barracuda. I'm sorry, Barracuda. Bar I cannot pronounce that. Barracuda, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, leader in email and uh, web security appliances. And uh, I believe these guys are in the Google Hall of Fame for um, hacking and security and encryption and all that stuff. Um, wow. And uh, his CTO is uh, John Oberheide, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, if you look these guys up, you'll be impressed. I mean, their credentials are amazing. So uh, when we when we went out looking for um, a security system, we wanted to go with the best. And then, uh, so we've been working with these guys for a little while, and we teamed up with them for this two-factor authentication. Um, and they've also pointed us to um, third-party audit teams that they've recommended in the uh, Bay Area as well. So we're speaking with them. Um, another thing that we didn't mention is it's free right now. Mm -hmm. But at the very most, this is going to cost one dollar a month. A dollar, uh, right? At the right. price of Bitcoin, that's a little bit high, don't you think? A <laughs> dollar, <laughs> right? Right. And I can I can promise we're never going to profit off this. Um, yeah. We're not going to try and make a profit off our user security. Um, well, they got to make something. I mean, they're creating this amazing technology. Oh no, they're they're, they're going to profit. Screened. They're going to make money off this. Yeah, Trade Hill's not going to make money off the security. That's uh, what I mean. Yeah. I mean, Duo. I'm looking. At I went to their website. This is DuoSecurity.com. Right. Um, I might just buy some stock in this company. This is just brilliant. It's I, really I cool. I would. I would. I mean, these guys are these guys are intelligent. They're marketing it well. Um, it looks like I Cisco would. uses them too. This is really sophisticated. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if Cisco uses them or if it's just compatible with their systems. But oh. yeah, these guys are definitely going places. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just an amazing company. And then also I can tell you um, from the administrative side, it's amazing. Um, like we talked about those text messages. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in 10 seconds, I can go in the system and change it. So instead of getting one code, you get 10. Um, I can change it so the codes expire in one minute or they never expire. And, we should uh, get these guys you know, on here, and, too. And when you did your fraud, I, I got a response from our coders literally within two minutes. And they said, oh, are you on only one TV again, Jerry? <laughs> so, uh, so You're it's, hacking it's us just, again. It's just an amazing system. And that I mean, I definitely, uh, I definitely have to um, promote them and tell you any, any other companies that are looking for a two-factor authentication system, definitely check out uh, DuoSec. Duo when Security. I reported that as fraud, you heard from, from Duo Security or from your own coders? From from our coders. Oh, okay. So they already got notified, and they're calling you. It's amazing. Yeah. You know what? This is like the first system that I've really seen where not only is it insanely secure, but it's also very usable. Yeah. Usually, you know, you're User you're you paying. You're you know, you're getting rid of one to get more of the other. Right. This, this seems to strike a nice balance. I've tried it on my own. Super easy. I've never done mm -hmm. it before. Yeah. Didn't really have to give it much thought or anything. And um, I'm happy that they were able to find, you know, oh, it, such exactly, a good usability exactly. point. And I, I, had, I had PayPal freeze one of my accounts a year or two ago for just some stupid reason. And uh, they told me that they were going to uh, mail me a two-factor authentication. 
and it took you know 12 days to get there or something oh like that and, you know and i'm just like it's just you're ridiculous. locked this, out this until is then up, yeah and this is up in in oh. five minutes yeah i mean how long did it take you saw and i was like describing every single thing I mean, literally, you saw how to do it. You could do this in, in you know, really in a minute or two. And then once yeah. it's set up, it's a one-time only deal. The thing, you know, the, it's, we talk about how this is free right now. I mean, even in the future, it'll be a dollar a month. Mm -hmm. It's basically free. And then um, it's in its software. It's not a physical object. And there's the cumbersomeness of having a physical object that you can lose. You drop it. You, oops! You drop it down the the, uh, the rain spout or whatever you call it. You know, in whatever. If it falls out of your pocket, I mean, I dropped one on the floor yesterday. And that's and also it's just the danger if you if you leave it. I mean, people are lazy. They'll just leave it plugged in. You know, and then they walk away. And then mm -hmm. they, there it is. But meanwhile. This is actually easier to use because you can insert those physical dongles in the wrong way or, you know, if it gets wet or damaged or lost or whatever. But with this, it's literally easier. I just click log in and then I click the green button and I'm in. I mean, it's not only does it seem more secure and cheaper and less cumbersome, it's actually easier to use. Exactly. And if you do want that older generation, you know, we can ship it to you. We, it's available. You ship, yeah, so, you know, you if you really want to go for it, then we, you know, we'll oblige. That's slick. I think we should get these duo security guys on here. Maybe on Absolute Tech Show or something like that. I think. Let me, what, let, I let mean, me talk with them. I'll see. I'll see if they want to come on. That'd be great. How um, much does this cost? If I have a website and I want to add duo security to it, I mean, this. I think every website should have this because. Oh, that's another thing. By the way, another benefit is that I was thinking. You know, when you go to the drugstore and they give you a little fob that they're going to scan if you want the real prices on the products and you go to the grocery store store and they give you another one and you end up with like 25 of those little barcode things on your I got more of mm -hmm. those than keys on my key ring right it's so crazy and I was thinking now is this the future I'm going to have one of these key fobs for every single website I go to no way yeah. no way so um, with this uh, obviously it's just software Mm -hmm. And what's cool about the app, it, it looks like you could register multiple sites. So if you're using multiple secure sites, you're using one app, it makes everything very simple. Yeah, exactly. And I believe right now you can only link one site to the phone, per phone. But mm. um, they've told me that they're probably going to have that done by the end of the month. So we're talking about 10 days from now, and I'm oh, not okay. sure if they're still holding that deadline or not. But mm -hmm. these guys are incredibly responsive. I call them mm -hmm. up, and I talk to them on the phone. I say, hey, you know, uh, would it be possible to get a feature like this? And they say, yeah, you know, we'll see if we can put something like that in. Wow. And, and they move fast. And these guys, I mean, they're just, they're, they're amazing. I've just never been this impressed with, That's a, great. with a security company before. Yeah, they need to do that. You hear that duo security, you need to do that. Because if we're going to talk about how wonderful it is, and like every website should have this, then I want this to work with my phone with ab absolutely every website I go to. I want my, my regular banking and, you know, you know anything what? that's secure. I want this for my PC. Yeah, just for your PC itself. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> that's actually cool. That's a really good idea. They should put a little a CMOS app or something that you can lock your PC down without without your phone you don't have your pc yeah but at that point i'd probably go with the fingerprint to be honest with you yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they, i just love how how easy it is so um but yeah that's that's just to me it's like it's so like obvious that every website should have this so at least at the very least banks the yeah. banks need this or mm -hmm. you know mortgage institutions or yeah. anything that's highly sensitive like that right any, so maybe not forums and blogs but for sure anything to do with banking or transactions or credit cards yeah. anything like that oh, no, or if you're or if you're a public personality you know like yourself Bruce I mean you I mean it wouldn't be a bad idea to lock down your Facebook and your Twitter with something like this as well I mean you yeah. don't want somebody tw you know tweeting in your name or anything like yeah. that so um, but I can't there's, remember there's passwords that's why my, my login is Bruce Wagner. My password is Bruce Wagner. I don't even bother because, you know, I figure I'm going to get hacked anyway. No, I'm yeah. kidding. No, we did a whole thing. I told you we did this whole how-to thing about how to manage your strong, secure passwords. So I have a, like a 20, no, what is it? 26 character random letters and numbers, capital symbols and everything for every single thing. And then what I do is I use this KeePassX password mm -hmm. manager and then it's synced to my Dropbox which is fine because nobody can actually open it. The, the, the database itself is encrypted, so it's very secure. Yeah. But for, for anything financial, yeah, definitely should have this two-factor. This is just the way to go. It's the obvious thing. Yeah, I was actually, I used to make patterns of like symbols and letters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then after a while of not using it, I would forget. Yeah. I'd be totally screwed. No matter how much you think you're going to remember, you don't. Yeah. I'm it, lucky it, to remember the one master. I have a master password on my KeePass X that's like 28 letters long and it doesn't spell anything. Letters and numbers both. 
And that I'm, I can remember that, and that's the only thing I can remember. But that's all I have to remember with that. Yeah, as long as you use it frequently, you know, it's mm -hmm. less likely you forget it. Yeah, exactly. Do -do 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 -do. And plus, your fingers remember it. You talk, sometimes I can't remember the thing, but I'll go do -do 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 -do, like close my yeah. eyes, and my fingers remember that, it. That happened to my friend. He actually forgot his ATM pin, which he uses every day, <laughs> and he had no idea. So he went on the calculator. He was like, "I think it's this." Do -do 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 -do. Trying to use the keypad. That's only four characters. Yeah. <laughs> Numbers. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, I think this is fantastic, and I wish Duo Security a lot of uh, a lot of success. And yes, they need to make it so that you can use the same app for uh, every website. So uh, that's brilliant. I'm really, really happy that you guys have done this. I think that, um, but it's not going to be required. You you can turn it off. You can turn it on, um, and so it's not mandatory uh, to use it unless you unless you actually opt into it. So that's a very good thing. And we've, we've lost Jared. <laughs> Internet. This is what happens with live television, you know, live connections all the way to Chile. But um, I'm really impressed with it, aren't you, Manny? I mean, uh, like I said, I, I really wish banks would implement this. Which, are, which of the four options, you know, when you log out and you log back in and there's the four options, the phone call, the voice phone call to you, or the SMS dual text sec. message? The, the push. The push is so cool. Yeah, the dual push is the best. It's uh, just cool because it gives you a big red button and a big green button and you yeah. can report it. I mean, not only can you not get in, but you can immediately report the incident. Yeah, you feel like those, com those commanders that are going to launch yeah. the warhead. So. <laughs> Remote control. <laughs> Arrest. Yeah. Arrest the bad guy. That is so slick. So we lost Jared. Oh, well. Um, I think we got to wrap it up anyway. We're yeah. out of time, but <laughs> sorry, Jared. We'll talk to you again. But um, anyway, thanks everybody for joining yeah, us. Yeah, um, I'm really glad that they are very security focused and conscious, and yeah. that's going to pay off in the long run. Yeah, I think everybody, everybody in the Bitcoin world is really, really um, interested in this, and uh, I hope that. But every every site that has anything to do with Bitcoin online is going to implement one form or another of. Uh, two-factor security. We're not just trading, you know, digital nothing. We're trading, you know, digital money that's worth a lot. A digital cash that's not reversible. So it's absolutely uh, imperative. So um, anyway, and this is, I think this is the coolest, this is the coolest way to do it is with software and mm -hmm. especially in conjunction with the cell a phone. a cool like, geek factor to yeah, it too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Sort yeah, of like... So. Um, uh, Bitcoin OTC, which is over the counter trading, man, to get on that and to be verified, you had to go through a lot of geeky stuff. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. You have to be more geeky than you are trustworthy to get onto that thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy. I know. But I it's totally up. worth it. I actually did get on by having used it yet. So You're going to teach me how to do that. Yes. I we'll do, do a show it. on that. Okay, we'll do a show on that. OTC. Yeah. That'll be a real geek fest. All right, everybody, awesome. we got to run. We're out of time. But thanks for joining us. Same time tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 3 a.m. Tokyo. Stay up. It's worth it. And uh, yeah, I'll actually be here tomorrow. Yes, that's right. And Manny. Oh, yeah, we got a huge <laughs> announcement. Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot. Manny, Manny Mena is, uh, is joining us full time. That's yeah. 150 hours a week, you know, seven days a week. He's always <laughs> here. He's going to basically the air mattress in Studio One that, you know, the, uh, <laughs> we use for the sketch comedy stuff. He's going to be sleeping here and living here. But he's going to be here, <laughs> Vice President of Operations, so he's here all the time. You're going to yeah. see a whole lot more of Manny. I'm definitely going to be taking a nap soon. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Yeah, exactly. No rest for the wicked. So, But thanks for joining us. And remember, uh, Bitcoin Conference and World Expo 2011, yes. Bitcoin 2011, is coming up August 19, 20, and 21. That is going to be huge. Bitcoinconference.com is the site to check it out. Bitcoinconference.com. Within hours, we're going to have the schedule finalized, the speakers, the schedule, the registration. You can buy with Bitcoin. And if you don't have Bitcoin, then call me and I'll tell you somebody in your zip code or in your country who will sell you Bitcoin for cash. BTC near me. BTC near me and all that. Yeah. So anyway, bitcoinconference.com. All the details will be there. Register and come. People are flying in from China and South America. You've got to be here. It's going to be gonna amazing. It's going to be awesome. Amazing. It's going to count towards my hours, right? So. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. And then the other thing too is um, Bitcoin show is expanding into like nine more languages. So stay tuned. All right. Oh, right yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. See you guys tomorrow. 2 p.m. Eastern. Take care. Take care. Mwah.